Okay, I can see it. Okay, um, shall I start us off? Yeah. Okay, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to the Medusa Games stream uh, of the two-person Great Fire of London. Um, so me and my colleague Gemma today will be talking you through how to play the game, um, the differences we have with like a two-player game, and sort of showing you what di different strategies and things that adds with. Um, if you've got any questions, queries, want to know more about this game or any of our other games, uh, please feel free to join us in our Discord. Um, and me or any of the other members of the team will be more than happy to help. Um, so uh, I'm going to sort of go through this with the assumption that you've played regular Great Fire of London before, and that's probably best. Um, so um, let's start off by placing our meeples and these three black tokens, which are the firefighter tokens, onto the board on any space that isn't green. So I'll put my yellow one down here. Okay, I'll put my purple okay. and blue. There we go. Okay, so uh, if you're familiar with Great Fire, you may already notice the sort of major difference, um, well, a few major differences on the board. Uh, first of all, me and Gemma both have two different colored types each. This is just because it's sort of trying to add extra trust strategy, trying to defend more houses uh, when there's less players, and also trying to destroy the other players' houses. Um, these two cards on the right um, are specific for the two-player version of the game, and I will talk through them um, once the non-player character has a turn. So to start off, um, Great Fire of London for just two people, um, it's pretty much exactly the same as a normal game of Great Fire. So to determine who goes first, we have to ask which one of us most recently went to London. So when was the last time you went to London, Gemma? Oh gosh, that would have been probably nine months ago. Okay, that's probably sooner than me. Pre-COVID, everything is a massive blur, so we'll go with that. So <laughs> would you like to go first? Sure, yeah. Um, so in that case, um, I will send the fire north. There we go. Um, so I am going to move it in uh, this direction. So I'm going to burn the greenhouse. Um, okay, so Gemma just, uh, it's okay. So Gemma just burnt my house and I've lost two victory points at the end of the game. Uh, so now she has her four moves of the meeple and the firefighters to try and sort of put out the fire and defend her locations and houses. Correct. So I am going to move my purple meeple one, two, three, and a firefighter over here. Four. That's okay. my four actions done. So now um, what Gemma has to do is to control the non-player character. So I'll let her talk you through that. But essentially, um, after both me and her have our turns, then the non-player character has their turn. So they will move both the fire and the meeple. Well, no, not the meeple, sorry. They will move the fire and the firefighters just as they would if they were an actual human being. So I'll let you carry on with that, Gemma. Yeah, that's right. So we're going to turn over one of these cards here. Um, if, uh, let me flip. Yeah. So this tells me that um, the fire uh, has an affinity for the blue houses. So if you um, can move towards the blue fire, that's what you're going to do. And these arrows show that um, if there aren't any blue available, the next one would be purple and then green and yellow and so on. Um, so I can see that. Uh, so uh, we've got a draw one, for the yeah. yep. And I just flip that over. Um, so it can't actually go south at this point. Oh, it can actually. Um, it can go. Oh, there is a little one, yeah. black one there. Yep. 
There we go. Um, so uh, it's going to go towards the blue one. Um, so I will just turn the blue house. Sad time. So, that, <laughs> so that's quite easy. So the um, fire has gone for the blue house. If it couldn't, it would try and go for purple, then green, yellow, orange, and white. Um, also, uh, say um, there were two choices. So say it needed to destroy a, for example, greenhouse, and it's here. Uh, it would destroy the, this one rather than this one, as um, there are two houses in there, and it's whichever one creates the most damage. So I'll let you carry on with that, Gemma. Yep, so the next step is to turn over one of these cards. Um, so this is um, essentially where the trained fire cones, um, they go towards this, this goal. So this one's um, St Paul's Church, which is over here. So the two nearest fire bands have to move towards um, that, but in the direction of the wind. So this one is closest okay. to it. So this one's going to move one south to here. and this is the next closest um, trained band, so this one's going to move down south as well. Um, and then that is the end of the non-player character turn, um, and then it'd be over to an um, actual player turn, so James, it's over to you. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, so, uh, I think the best thing to do right now, probably to go north again. So it'll go north here and destroy Gemma's purple house here. Um, so she's just lost two points. And uh, now I've got the sort of four turns for my meeples and the firefighters to try and put out the fire. So hmm. I think for now we'll just start moving towards it. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so now I've got to conduct the non-player turn. So I'll take this, flip it over. So this is going to try and destroy purple houses. We'll check which direction it's going in. So that's going east uh, to destroy a purple house. This can do that, so I'll do that. And sorry, Gemma, you've got another house destroyed again. Ah. So you've just lost two points. Okay, so now we're going to see which direction the firefighters are going in. So we'll flip this over. Um, where's the... the so that's the artillery ground up north. So uh, to do this, um, if you're just joining us, I'll give you a brief talk through. Uh, we move the two firefighters um, closest to whichever landmark was just picked out. Um, one space towards it, going the di uh, not going towards it, sorry, going the direction of the direction card that we just drew for the fire as well. So um, I will also be going east. So it will be this one uh, goes here because it will be defending the most number of houses, rather than here because that's only one house. So the firefighters are protecting the most houses possible, and this one goes here as well. Um, okay, so uh, that's the non-player turns done. So now it's uh, Gemma's turn. Uh, yeah, cool. Um, so I am going to go west. Um, so I'm going to go for uh, this one here. So I'll burn orange house. Um, you're safe for now, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I am going to move my blue meeple um, a little bit closer as well. So that's going to go one, two, um, three, and another firefighter over here. So four. Um, so that's end of my turn. Um, then it'd be the NPC turn. Um, I should pick up with me. There we go. Um, so gonna turn over this. So again, oh yeah, we've got the intensifier, the, the fire. Um, do you want to do that? Uh, yeah. So uh, Gemma's 
just drawn this card, which is a Fire Intensify card. Um, so when you draw this on your turn, um, it means you add three fire tokens to anywhere on the board that's already fire. So you could add one here, one here, and one here, or two there and one over there. Um, and that essentially spreads the fire out for the rest of the game. Um, so later on, um, if this fire is cut off here and it's all the way over there, it will allow it to spread and cause more destruction over on that side of the board. Yeah, and I'm going to move one, two, three. Um, so that intensifies the fire. Uh, and yeah, back to the NPC turn. So um, it's going for orange. And the wind direction is north. Um, okay, so it can go there. It can I indeed. I think that's the only north. Yep. Um, so that goes another orange one. And then the firefighters are trying really hard to protect Old Gate. Um, which is there. Um, so one's already on it. Um, so you couldn't really get much closer. Um, and this one would be the next closest. So that would move back north here um, and then this one would also move north um, and then it's your turn James. Okay um, just before I begin my turn um, if you're just joining us or if you're sort of new to this this is the Medusa Games playthrough of uh, the Great Fire of London a two-player edition so before this point there, there wasn't a two-player ver two version of the game uh, it's an expansion pack that we are releasing um, so if you're unaware of Great Fire of London, I'll just briefly talk through that. Um, as you can see at the bottom of the board, there are um, different coloured houses. Um, in, an, in a game with sort of more than two players, uh, you'd have one coloured house that you're trying to protect. However, in the two-player game, uh, you have two different coloured houses that you're trying to protect. The green and yellow. And Gemma has purple and blue. Uh, so on each turn... Um, use these cards which i'm sort of hovering over now uh to move the fire in different directions um and then you have four turns to move these meeples and firefighters to put out the fire um the way you put out the fire is say that this black token was on top of that fire there that would mean that fire is contained um and then say Gemma's meeple was in there she, she would then be containing that fire she'd be able to collect it and that red fire token would go over there, and that would give her an extra point at the end of the game. Um, I think you were over here, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And that was here, I think. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, so each house of yours that gets burned, you lose two victory points. Um, so you're trying to burn everyone else's houses, protect your own houses, and collect as much fire as you can. The player who's collected the most fire will collect this card uh, that I'm sort of covering now. It's uh, the Hero of London, and that gives you two victory points at the end of the game. Okay, um, so I'll take my turn then. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Okay, so I think I'll go... Hmm. North... And destroy the uh, these two. So that means one of mine and one of Gemma's is lost. However, the reason I've done that is because um, there are these things. So when you um, you'll see these little grey tokens at different places on the board. Um, when you burn down houses on a space that has these green, these grey tokens, you flip them over and they each have sort of different abilities in the game. So the one I've picked up now is a bomb. Um, so that essentially means at some point later in the game, um, when I'm going through my meeple and firefighter turns, I can blow up one of the houses 
uh, destroy that, that player would lose two points, and that makes it um, easier to sort of defend your own houses or areas on the map that you're trying to get far away from, because um, if the fire can burn a house rather than go through an empty space, it will. So that's just a little added bonus for me, so I'll put it here for now. Okay, so now I have my four moves to try and contain the fire as much as I can. So I'll go one, two, three, and four, move the fire fight a bit closer. Okay, now it's the uh, non-player character turn, so we'll see what direction they're going. I'll flip that over. So um, they're going east. And they want to, oops. I want to destroy yellow houses. So is there a way it could go east and destroy yellow houses? Yeah, it's that one. Mm -hmm. um, and that will cause quite a lot of destruction. So uh, put a fire through there. And then because there are four houses in this area, that means the fire is expanded up to four. So again, later on, if the fire gets cut off, then it will be able to spread more easily. Okay, so now we do um, the Meeple and Firefighters, or just the Firefighters rather. Okay, so they're going towards the Tower of London. Um, well, the ones near the Tower of London, and they're going uh, east. So um, it would be this one. And this one, I'd say. Um... Okay, so that one's containing a fire now. And that yep. one would go there because there's four houses. There we go. Okay, so now it's your turn. Cool, so I am going to send the fire west. Oh, sorry, I forgot to draw. Oh, that's all right. There we go. And just going to send it west, and I'm going to destroy... Um, the houses here. So, uh, there's three houses on there, so... Uh, I need to add two more fire to it. Oh, there we go. And so I'll just fill that back up. Um, and then with my four actions, um, I'm going to bring the uh, the fire cone, uh, like the trained fire cone, close to me. So one, um, two. Three, four. And it's the end of my turn. Okay, uh, have uh, you drawn? I'm just going to pick up now and then the NPC turn. Um, so it's after yellow houses and it's going west as well. Uh, oh, there yep. we go. Um, so yellow, 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 west. That's going to be this one here. Um, so uh, what is it? That one? Because it can't. There's no one going through there. Oh yeah, of course. Sorry. Um, uh, it'd be here, wouldn't it? Or there? I think it'd be this one. Um, yeah. And it's equal damage either way. Um, so that that burns the yellow one. Um, and then to protect, I'm gonna go towards Shoreditch, um, which is up here um so it'll be these two um going west so this one be here and and that one um there's two houses on both those spots so Gemma makes the choice which house she'd rather it goes into i'm gonna go for bishop's gate um and that's npc turn complete Okay, uh, thank you. So, um, if you've played Great Fire before, um, and uh, you're just watching this now, you might have noticed like how the strategy can change with the non-player, uh, so it creates quite an interesting dynamic, um, because it means firefighters are sort of going in different directions, and you've got to add that into how you're thinking about the game. Okay, so, um, hmm. I think on my turn, so I'll make the fire go north. It sort of threads through, destroys Gemma's house there. 
really spreading in north wow <laughs> um and now i have my four turns so one two three i can move in but i can't collect that because it costs a turn to collect a fire token so that means on her turn because gem is there she could quite easily come up and snap that fire token and gain an extra victory point um, so now it's the NPC turn, so we'll see which direction they're going in. Okay, so that's east, and they're going after white houses. Well, that's fairly easy because I saw white house down there, and I don't think there are any others it can go to, as far as I can see. Yeah. Oh, there is that one. Oh, no. Oh, no, because then it's connected. No, it, yeah, it doesn't it's connect. Okay. Things game. So uh, that White House is destroyed. Um, weirdly, the first White yeah. House to be destroyed this game, uh, which doesn't usually happen, but there we go. Okay, and now they're going towards, well, the ones near the temple uh. are going east. So that would be this one and this one. Yep, uh, yep, because the other two over here are contained, so they, they can't move. Okay, so we'll move this one there. And that one. There. Okay, uh, so now it's your turn. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to move. Oh, sorry, uh, forgot to oh, again. I have taken. Um, so I'm going to move it north because um, I can spy a green one that I want to get. <laughs> Um, okay, um, and as Gemma's doing that, I'll replenish the fire. Um, as you can see, the fire's dwindling, but the fire shouldn't ever run out. Um, it doesn't ever run out. It just sort of keeps going, so it can keep spreading throughout the game. Yeah, um, and uh, whilst he's doing that, I'm going to take my four actions, um, which I am indeed going to jump in here and take that extra victory point. Um, so I take this fire cone that was contained and that'll be worth victory point at the end uh, and like james said earlier if i have the most at the end then i will get um the hero of london card which uh, is an extra two victory points and um, so that was uh one two actions um and then i'm going to use my third one to move here and my fourth one to move this fire cone down There we go. Um, and then I'm just going to pick up. So I've always got five in my hand. And the NPC turn. So this time, direction is towards purple. Um, I'm not happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the direction that it's going in, um, south. Um, so let's have a look. Um, Probably be, I say this one, Guild Guildhall. Yeah, it's destroying Guildhall. Um, Out. <laughs> that is a uh, yeah, quite harsh. Um, so a few of you may have noticed if you've not played this game before, um, this sort of big number six on Guildhall or on different locations on the map, such as the tower. Um, so that essentially means, like at the beginning of the game, you have uh, three different levels of cards. Um, there's different locations on the map that you are trying to protect as much as possible. So say if, for example, you have the Tower of London or Bread Street, and at the end of the game that isn't burnt down, that means that you will get six points. Then there are locations which are a bit easier to defend, that give you four points, and ones that are quite easy to defend. So, for example, um, Hatton Garden is two points, because it's unlikely the fire will burn that, but you're still going to try and protect it with you know as much effort as you can as you can um, muster up and um, so okay. i'm just going to finish off the mpc turn so bread street was the one that uh was protected so uh i'm going to move this fire cone south to here and um, to st paul's church and the next closest one uh, is this one over here which will go south um into this place um and then that's the mpc players turn over um and then it's james your turn Okay, um, as Gemma made a note of earlier as well, you can see the fire's going in quite a north direction. 
Um, this doesn't always happen, but uh, there are more north and more west cards than any other cards in the deck, just because the fire sort of spread northwest direction when it actually happened. Um, so it's sort of fairly accurate. Um, so I'm going to. Sorry, Gemma. Go here. Destroy that greenhouse. Okay, um, now uh, I have, I'm going to draw. Okay, so that's another fire intensified card. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to go up here. One, two, three. Wow, okay, so the fire is spreading quite a fair amount right now. Okay, now I have my four turns. So I'm going to go one and collect that token because i was already there which is quite handy um that is actually contained as well that one there is a black token in there so two three and then go there four um so because i have two fire tokens that makes me so far the hero of london um if Gemma manages to get three or more than that then she'll click the uh, Hero of London card. So now we're doing the NPC turn. So, so another west. And what's it trying to do? It's trying to go to White Houses. Okay. Um, can you spot any Gemma? Where it could be trying to go? Um, Am I being so deaf? West. Um, it's pretty blocked off. It can't, can it, oh yeah, it can actually get through to that one. Yeah, it's a wood street. So destroy that. Before balancing act. <laughs> oh, there we go. Move that one a bit up. Okay. So White's um, just lost two houses again. Finally catching up to the rest of us. And uh, we'll see which direction the fire. So Hatton Garden. So. Way over here. Very obviously that one and this one as well. So I think this can only go there. And that one. That one will go um here. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, I'm pointing the wrong way for some reason there. Yep. Okay. Okay then, so it's your turn. Cool. Um I am going to send Gate. Um, so I need to put another one in there because there's two houses. Um, so that's an orange and a green. Um, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you catching me up now? Um, and then with my four actions. Okay, and Gemma can't collect that right now um, because not all the fire in there is contained. So say there's a zone with multiple fires in it, you're not allowed to take that token. You have to wait until it's all contained. Um, and then this one up here will be three, four. There we go. Um, so that's my turn done. Um, the NPC, mm -hmm. which is targeting green. And um, it's going north. It's so always targeting green. <laughs> wow, well, I, I was a big hit. I took the purple, so <laughs> you can take this one. Um, so There's one here. here. Um, There's one there as well. Uh, and one up there. Oh, but this one up here has three houses in there, so it will cause the most destruction. So therefore it has to go that way. So we'll pop three in there. Which burns green, orange and white. And then the lovely fire. 
firefighters are going to try and save some farts in the hospital. Um, so that'll be probably this one and this one. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, this one is an equal. Uh, so I guess that'll just go here. Um, mm -hmm. And then this one's going to go into St Paul's Church because it has five houses. Um, and then that's the end of that turn. Okay then. Um, so I'm going to go north again. Oh, didn't mean to do that. There we are. So uh, the fire does still spread through, so I'm going to go there. Sorry, Gemma. <laughs> Um, and then take this grey token here. I'm just going to replenish the, the fire a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. Seems to collect that grey token. Is it locked? Um, it should be okay. Try, try zooming in a little bit more. <laughs> like I can pick it up. There we go. Okay. Uh, could you just flip it over, please? Yep. Um, I'll flip it on your side as well. Oh, thank you. Oh, no. Yeah. So is that... Oh, no. <laughs> and then he went so, into my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another bomb. Okay, so now I have my four moves. So... I'm going to go... One, two... Three. And there I can only go. collect one of those. But it does mean I'm still the hero of London. Okay, um, and now we're going to do the NPC turn. Well, I'll draw. Okay, so they're going north. And they're going to try and burn greenhouses again, of course. So I think it's just a balance this turn between these two houses. Um, so I get to choose which one of my houses gets destroyed. So we'll go for that one. Very sad. <laughs> and now, um, we'll do the fire tokens. So, Miss Blainard's Castle. So it's down here. Um, this one will go north there. That one's containing a fire. So it'll be this one that can't actually move. It can't go any further north. Than it already is. Okay, so it's your turn, Gemma. Cool. Um, I am going to send the fire. Um, hmm, I'm trying to see this to so I'm going to send the fire west. Um, so I'm going to burn this. Orange one here. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm just going to pick up now. And my four action turns. So I'm going to take this contained fire here for my first one. Still doesn't make me the hero of London, but I'm going to try. Um, so that's one. Um, and then I'm going to move two, three, four. And that's the end of my turn. So the NPC turn. Aiming for orange houses. In the direction of west again. Um, so if we do orange west, probably this one. Yep. Destroys four houses. Um, two, three, and four. Well, those yellow houses have actually stayed relatively unscathed until this point. Safe. None of those hatch roofs. <laughs> So then, place of protect is right 
exchange. So that's pretty close to fire. Um, I would say this one. Um, I'm going to go here because that's the two. Yep. And this one um, is all equal, really. So I'll go here. Um, and it's your turn. Okay. Um, so I just very briefly talk through um, the fact, like, obviously, in the two player game, um, a few who played before may have noticed this, but if you haven't, I'll just uh, sort of reference it. You can see that um, my greenhouse is there and Jimmer's purple houses are being destroyed at quite a rapid pace. Uh, now, in the usual game, it's usually the sort of non player houses that get destroyed quite quickly. And that's what I really like about this two player version of Great Fire. It sort of adds more a uh, level of chance and sort of interest to it. Um, you know, some players do, do play in the way where they're constantly burning down another player's house and trying to find ways to do that. But uh, some players do sort of like defending their own and trying to, to have like a more defensive strategy in the game. Um, and in this, that makes that more of a challenge. You know, um, I can sort of try and push the fire towards where Gemma's houses are. But the NPC, you know, <laughs> won't think that, obviously. It, it just sort of moves in a random direction it's the look of the draw and that really really creates like an interesting dynamic um and also um if you have a two-player household i know a lot of games don't cater for that um and this can be a sort of really really nice way to play quite a strategy-based game uh, not many of which do have two players to um sort of bring that into your household which is really really nice and refreshing um and I also having the whole game. sorry go on I can turn the whole game upside down, um, but using the NPC turn um, can be quite sad sometimes when you have to yeah, burn four of your, your coloured houses, um, just because that's that's the way the, the cards roll. But um, it's very rare to get a, a game that is just as good to play it as well as for larger groups. Um, so it's really, really nice to have a game like this um, with an expansion that allows you to do that. Yeah, I completely agree. And um, obviously this game has been out... Um for a number of years now you might have played it quite a few times and this just adds a, a fresh spin on it gives you sort of a different way to play which is always always a lot of fun okay so i'll just do my turn now so i'm going to go here goes through destroys that blue house And pick up another grey token. So this one is a direction arrow. Um, so on any fire turn that I have, I basically have another turn. I can move it in the direction I've just moved it once more. So if I've just moved it north, I can make it go north again. Uh, okay, now I have my four um, moves. So one, two, three. Realise that was particularly mean. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I had a sneaky suspicion that that was what you were uh, going to do. <laughs> okay, so we'll see uh, which direction the NPC is going in now. So that's going north. Um, and blue. And as you can see at the bottom of the board, there's only three blue houses that have been destroyed so far. Um, so this is like adds that extra dynamic. It's like Gem has done a really good job of defending those blue houses, but now the sort of game's throwing it in a different direction. It's sort of doing something which I seem to have not been able to do myself, <laughs> which is very fun. That's a really, really, really nice, interesting dynamic to it. Um, I think this is the only blue house... Oh, no, this is that one as well. There's a few, I think... but they're all um, one, so you can choose. Yeah, I think I'll go there just because it would be interesting, because that's quite near the tower. That sort of throws the game a little bit. Um, I've done that, and I may have given away the game a little bit there, because um, the three cards you have in your hand that are different locations on the board, you're trying to keep secret than everyone else. Because I've just done that, Gemma might now be thinking, oh, James doesn't have the tower, so I can I can destroy that and sort of destroy those houses in there. Um, but do I want to waste a turn on that? You know, Do I want to try and work out where else he's got? Has he got 
Bread Street, for example, maybe. So that's quite an interesting sort of sort of thing in the game. Okay, um, so now we look at the last um, one, so Guild Hall. Okay, so um, it's this one and this one both going north. This would go here because it's one house there, and that would go there because it's one house there as well. Okay, uh, now we'll draw, and it's Gemma's turn. Interesting how the fire has kind of stopped spreading over to the west. Um, that is intriguing. I feel like my houses are very much in danger. <laughs> hmm. um, well, I am going to. So we're going to send it west. Oh, whoops. There we go. And. Uh, um, I'm going to go for this greenhouse up here. I think that will. Can I do that? I just zoom in. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's looping through. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> there we go. And then I have my tall actions. Actually, I'm just going to pick up. Aha! Fire intensify. Um, okay, so I'm going to pop um, these on here, one, um, two, Um, yes, yeah, so then I get my four actions, um, and I'm going to move one, two, three, four. Um, so that's the end of my turn. Uh, now for the NPC. Uh -huh. So um, obviously we'll have to flip those cards because we've, we've run out of them. Um, I'll just give them a quick shuffle. That was meant to flip the deck over. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. This is. I hadn't stacked them properly. This is. Okay, so as as Gemma's sorting that out, um, I'll just talk a little bit about like the strategies you can build up in this game. So, um, so uh, there's sort of lots of different ways to play. Uh, as you can see, the fire's gone in sort of sort of line direction this way it's it's sort of going quite far north um and that might be the strategy you want to employ you want to spread out the fire as much as possible to try and cause as much destruction as you can um you know and that's quite a risky one because your houses and your locations might be destroyed in the process um or you might be more of a contained player a lot of players sort of like keeping it safe like trying to keep the fire as, as down as possible um, but if you're a bit of a, a pyromaniac, I guess, you might, uh, you might sort of enjoy um, trying to burn as much as possible and create as much destruction as you can. Um, and as, as we were saying uh, briefly earlier, uh, the two-player game really really adds to like different strategies. You know, when you've got um, this NPC who's sort of throwing the game in random ways, you know, maybe you've got a firefighter really close to a bit of a fire, you want to contain it, but no, they've suddenly had to go north. That can create a really, really like frustrating but interesting way to play. You know, you might not try and contain the fire as much if you're usually quite cautious. There's lots of sort of little strategies that really, really change with a two-player game. And also the fact that you both have two different coloured houses that really adds a lot. Um, as you can see at the bottom of the board, Gemma's purple house has been quite destroyed badly, but her blue ones haven't that much. Um, and it's sort of trying to to balance that, you know, you might have a lot of your houses in sort of one zone, um, but then you might be able to protect quite a few of the other ones. Yeah, 
um, so I've just finished the MPC turn, so just to run you through that, the, um, the, the location turned over with St Paul's um, Church, um, so these two have both moved west um, towards it. Okay. Okay then, so um, I'm going to go West, oops. Okay, so now I have my four turns. Um, but this is sort of quite quite interesting because the, the sort of way the game has, has come with the two players, it's made the fire in a certain direction. It's sort of harder to get the firefighters over there without the knowledge Gemma's probably going to take them on her turn and try and contain them. So I was literally going to move this firefighter here, but she's already there. So I think that's that's part of why the two player game is so interesting. Just you know, where the firefighters end up can be really, really frustrating. Um and has it makes you sort of think about the game in a different way, think about what you're doing in a different way. Right. I'm going to go one, two, three. Trap that one on there. Four. And now it's the NPC turn. So they're going east. And they're going to burn a blue house. Um, and as I was saying earlier, Gemma's only got four blue houses that have been destroyed. So now this sort of is balancing the game a little bit. So if you are quite far behind, you might think like, oh no, like there's sort of no chance I can come back from this. But then something like that happens with the, the NPC and it, it really, really does help the game balance out nicely. So um, it can either destroy this one and this one. Um, or that one. But it's all just one house. So I think I'll just destroy that one house. So the player makes the choice um, if there are the same amount of houses on each one. Yeah, so that's a good tactic for you because then it means that you're one step closer to another set of two houses of my colour. Um, so that would make sense. Okay, so um, this one's Hatton Garden. Um, so you got here. So that's going east. There's no houses that's connected to, so that's just going to a blank spot. Um, and this one can only go over the fire. So say I was really excited to sort of use that fire token to, to try and take out a bit up here. It's sort of um, ended that now. It's trapped on there until someone picks it up. Not only that, Gemma's also in that spot, so it's basically given her a free point uh, at the end of the game. Okay. So that's, uh, yeah, it's quite nice. Okay, so that's the end of the NPC turn. Um, so I'll take my turn. So I'm going to send the fire east. Um, and I'm going to send it over to this yellow one. I see that yellow has been pretty safe in this, this one as well. Um, and then I'm just going to uh, pick up now and take my free point. Action point, um, and then I'm going to use my others to move this one. Um, so two, three, and then I can use my force one to also take this because my move is already there. Get this over here, but I'm still not the hero of the night. No, but it has balanced the game quite a bit. You know, I I had so many fire tokens, I was quite far ahead. And now because of the NPC turn and the way you've played and like base your strategy around that, that's really helped you out. Um, yeah, it's interesting how it can it can turn quite um, quickly in, in the two-player version, um, which is quite nice. Um, so we're going to move on to the NPC turn. So we're after yellow this time and going 
around um, like w within a turn because of the, those NPC turns, it can really change the game um, in, in the space of a few minutes. Um, so um, I really recommend the expansion. Um, it's made this game so much better um, for, for smaller households. Um, and yeah, uh, please please do um, request demos throughout the weekend. Um, it would be good to, to hear from you all. Yep. Uh, okay. Thank you, everyone, so much. And thank you, Gemma, as well. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Um, and it will be great to hear from as many of you as possible. So please, just feel free. Um, okay. uh, these streams are being recorded as well. So if you need to watch over it at any point, if there's anything that um, we said that you've found quite interesting you can sort of go back to or if there's anything you feel like you missed out on go back to the beginning watch it again uh, that's completely fine um, but like I said ask us any questions in the discord as well if needs be so thank you so much guys um, we'll see you soon uh, yeah. bye, Thank you. <laughs> bye. <laughs>